Welcome to All the Things They Don't Want You to Talk About podcast. This podcast will explore all the subjects that make the insecure squirm in their seats. Religion, politics, local and national, the Constitution of the United States, and the wheel of love and hate, to just name a few. Stay with us as we use our freedom of speech to delve into the good and the bad. If this podcast is not for you, feel free to find another one. Without any further ado, here comes all the things they don't want you to talk about podcast. All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of All the Things They Don't Want You to Talk About. And we're back on to lifeguards again. And we have a very important uh, guest here this morning, Bob Pratt from Great Lakes uh, Surf Rescue Project. I got I, I had to look at you this time to see your T-shirt to actually get it right. Because this is an extension of the radio show, which I think every time I tried to say it, I didn't get it right once. But here we are getting it right finally. But uh, Scott T is here in the studio. Good day, Scott. Good day. And good day to you, Amanda Jones, who has tirelessly been through all the information that Bob sent <laughs> in a very long email to uh, get us uh, kind of ready. Cause it's, we, it's great information. Yes, we, this is our, our third one. We've done a couple with uh, Heather Johnson, and I have to uh, make a little retraction from our last one. Uh, we had said, uh, Heather had mentioned lightning rods, and we were supposed to be talking about lightning detectors, and uh, I, which I think are certainly more valuable than a lightning rod on, on the beach. But uh, even back then when we said that, I was kind of like, that just doesn't seem right. But uh, regardless of all that, we got that one wrong, and we called them, uh, we said lightning rods instead of lightning detectors. So hopefully if you go back and listen to that one, you'll know exactly why we had to uh, clarify that. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Bob, we've uh, we had quite a nice little conversation on the radio show, but now it's time to get really into the down and dirty. Um, and we're going to talk about on this podcast some of the things that uh, it looks as though the city is hiding and it looks as though they're protecting. Um, you've even uh, in a different place used the word lies coming from the city. So we're going to explore those a little bit later. But, uh, you know, last podcast, we did a lot of talking about the budget. And there were a lot. I don't want to go back and redo those things that we already talked about. But there, I know Amanda had pointed out a few things that we did not talk about. And and I think the first thing I will say we did talk about is whistles. And I see that you pulled one out. We did talk about them last <laughs> week, but we want to talk a little bit about whistles real quick. And then we'll kind of have Amanda uh, let us know uh, what other uh, budget items we want to talk about as we move towards why it seems the the city of South Haven is dragging their feet on making this happen. So um, what, what what about the uh, well, the whistles did we get wrong? Well, you got nothing wrong about, about the whistles. Okay. Um, however, and, and, and the whistles are really a, a very, very small piece in, in this larger picture that, that mm -hmm. we're going to hopefully paint today. And But um, if you look at the, the city's estimated budget for lifeguards, um, under employment costs, which is kind of a strange place because you would think it would go under lifeguard equipment. Yeah. Um, but there's some some moving around of the parts here that, that that's, I think, a little bit problematic. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But if you look, um, this document claims that um, the city needs 28 lifeguard whistles and lanyards. They estimate the cost at $16. Mm -hmm. This is a Fox 40 whistle. Mm -hmm. It is used at the World Cup. It's used at the Super Bowl. It's used at the Olympics. It is like the most go-to whistle, right? you know, for any professional organization. If you go on Google right now and type in Fox 40 whistle and lanyard, you're going to find them from anywhere from uh, $3 if you buy them in bulk to 5 or $6. Okay. The estimated cost per the city staff's budget is sixteen dollars a piece. Uh huh. So it's so exaggerated it's, by. Yeah. So you're looking at, about ten, eleven dollars per. At, at least three, three, three times. And that's yeah. again, that's just it's, it. It doesn't end up being a, a tremendous amount of money, 
No, but I think it shows that they aren't taking it very seriously. Yeah, because right. when you go look at everything else that they're saying that we need, you know, it's it's like that whole hundred thousand dollar toilet lid that the government used to. Uh, oh yeah, the, yeah. You know, the, the, the you know we got new toilets for the for this th- whole building, and each th- lid cost a hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred and fifty dollar hammer that the, yeah. that the Pentagon yeah. is buying. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, we, and you mentioned you mentioned lightning detectors, and um, the the city claims that they need eight lightning detectors. Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, two hundred and twenty nine dollars a piece for a total of eighteen hundred and something. Right. And your phone can download an app that will tell you with tremendous precision if there's lightning in the area where where the closest lightning oh. strike is. Yeah. Yeah. And it is an absolutely free app. And so there's there's no reason that you need to have um you know somebody spending money on a on a Lightning detector. I'm going to ask you about that quickly, though, because I have Verizon, and a lot of times when I get right on that lake shore, it's real sketchy whether I get a signal or not. Mm-hmm. So, can that? I mean, was that something that could uh, that they feel they need to have these because of that? You don't need. You don't need eight. You don't need. No, I was thinking the one mm-hmm. on the north, one on the south beach. Is That's probably all you would need. A- a- absolutely, absolutely, and and put it on um, the in the budget are two. Um, I think they call them mules or ATVs right. or, yeah. or gators. Um, put them on those. So if you if you have trouble getting reception, you can quickly drive sure. to a place that that has reception. But yeah. um, I mean, if if, if you look, um, you guys talked that when when Heather was here, you talked about the parking stickers. Yes. Yes. Right. That's absurd. Right. That 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 that's just absurd. Um, the portable radios. The city claims that you need eight at five thousand dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. Um, at most, you need one. For the, the the person in charge communicating with the other emergency services, right. the police and fire agencies, would, would it would still that not be maybe a, you need two one for the north and the south beach? Or? You, you you can make that argument, sure. Okay, sure. Um, but that but then you should have um what we call talk around radios, small portable Motorola radios. Sure, you can yeah. buy it. You yeah, know, the best, two mile best, best mile. exactly, like, yeah, exactly. And and that's how the lifeguards could communicate from one um from one stand to another. You don't need to let, for example, central dispatch know that a, a you know a lifeguard has somebody who doesn't look like they can swim well headed out toward a buoy, mm-hmm. um, which is something that, that you would have. Um, I mean, just 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 moving on, there's the AEDs. Yes. The city claims they need 11 AEDs at $2,000 a piece. Mm-hmm. I've talked to lifeguards um, in Grand Bend, uh, Ontario. I've talked to lifeguards in St. Joe, New Buffalo. I've talked to lifeguards um, on the East Coast, on the West Coast. Um, you need You need to have... It's like a, a, a school building. Right. Should have an AED. Sure. If it's a big school, you might want one on each floor or sure. one on each wing. There's no reason at all that you need 11 AEDs at $22,000. What? How many would you think? I mean, because we have all of our, we have, I think, seven beaches. Our two main, north and south, they're the two big beaches. That's where everybody goes. And the other ones are really, really small. And I don't even know if in the budget, if they wanted to put a guard on those beaches. Because if you don't have a guard on those beaches, why would you need the AED? Well, um, it's nice to have AEDs, you know, in, in remote areas in case somebody has a, a heart attack because mm-hmm. the AED really is a very little value in a drowning situation. Um, but like in, in the school, you need to be able to protect it. You need to protect it from the weather. You need to protect it from vandalism. Right. And right. so um, if you've got two um, mules with a head guard for North Beach and South Beach, that's where that yeah. should be. The same so, thing with the, the oxygen tank. So thing. the AED really is more of a protection for the beach goer, not necessarily for the swimmer. A- absolutely. Because that's mm-hmm. what, when they talked about that, I'm like, man, you, you're pulling someone out of the water and you're going to hit them with an AED. Well, you better make sure they're getting dried. And if they don't get totally dry, you might just kill them right there on the on the beach. That, that, well, a couple, couple of things. One is that that just shows that they don't know what they're talking about. Because um, the chances of using an AED in a drowning are, are very, very remote. Um, and, and secondly, um, it's the, the AED will not shock a, a non-shockable rhythm. So if, if, you, if, if we had an AED here and you put it on me, it's going to read my heart rhythm. That you're good. That I'm good. Yeah. And it's not going to shock me. And, okay. and, and yeah. the, the problem with a, with a drowning in an AED is typically a drowning victim, because it's a respiratory emergency and not a cardiac emergency, the, the problem with the drowning is not that the person's heart has stopped. The, the problem is that they, had, they don't have any oxygen anymore. And that's why we don't do compression-only CPR on people who are drowning, because um, it doesn't provide any oxygen to them. 
So my friend Justin Stumsprott, who's an emergency room physician and one of the the leading gurus in in drowning resuscitation, says the drowning doesn't stop until you uh, provide oxygen to the air. To the to now, the, now would that be a mouth to mouth situation? It can be. That's why lifeguards have have pocket masks. Yeah. with them. Um, and then um, also in the in the budget are is an oxygen tank, and they believe they need eight, one right. for each lifeguard stand. I thought Again, that was insane. It, it is insane. It they, they need they need two, one for North Beach, one for South Beach. Now. Well, Storing one of those, would that be something that can be stored on the ATV along with the AED and the first aid kits and absolute, all that stuff? Absolutely. Well, my wow. question here. Not, not, not only can it be, it should be. Mm -hmm. Because that way, if somebody is at the concession stand or at the bathrooms and is having a heart attack. Yeah. It, they can, it's like a little right. mobile ambulance. Yeah, you know, and, hold on. Let, absolutely. Let, let, me okay. pack, let me pack the gator before we head over there. So it's already right. there. Oh, it's absolutely. There. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the so, city already received three AEDs from the Rotary Club. Yeah. So honestly, it's, it shouldn't even so be it in the It might not budget. even be in the budget. Well, Scott, I know you're over there uh, chopping the bit for a well, question I'm, here. Well, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, are they forecasting for all the beaches? Or is it, I mean, in our day, we only had lifeguards on the North Beach and the right, South right, Beach. Right. We didn't have Digma Park. We didn't have the, I don't think know, they're going to put guards on those beaches, are they? I, I, I don't believe so. And I, and I don't think there's, there's really a need for it. But I mean, that's, I, that's I mean, what I'm, I'm looking when you start seeing eight. I'm, I'm thinking, is it going no, to be that, for each of the they, beaches? They had eight towers is is mm -hmm. is the, the rationale for, for that. Eight towers. Is that for where? eight towers? Like two or three on the South Beach, five. four on the North Beach? Yeah. or Oh, wow. I think it was yeah. five. I think it was five and three, but I'm not yeah. positive of that. Well, I think two well, on the north and so one and, on the and, south and, is probably and, and let, it. Let's let's be clear. And again, you know, we kind of get pigeonholed as as the lifeguard guys, and and we certainly are are, are very pro lifeguard. But Lake Michigan, from the the Indiana border to the Mackinac Bridge, has 308 miles of coastline. We are not going to have lifeguards for 308 miles of coastline. Right. That's just that's just. You know, yeah, it's not ridiculous. Yeah, we well, went through that the other day. I think we were number two in well, coastline and of you know in the United States. Absolutely, yeah. Alaska is the only state in in the United yeah. States that has more yeah. coastline than than Michigan does. Well, so. and half of it's private. So, I mean, and and what's the case? I mean, somebody if they drown on private or they drown on public, it's, right? So the the road end parks, the you know Deer Lake Park, and you know some of these other parks, yeah. they're, they're not going to have lifeguards. They, they don't they don't really need lifeguards. No. But you need to have an option for visitors who are coming, for tourists who are coming. That the the most popular beaches should should have lifeguards, especially yeah. if you're charging ad admission to get there. Yeah, north and south, and then uh, the Dykeman Park. Right there are those. They got the two that are close, just separated by an apartment complex. Right. Those ones probably should have. Is that, one is that the too. blue stairs? No, the blue no. stairs on the south side. This is the north side. Okay. Um, when you're traveling, I didn't know. I wish I knew the names of streets in South Haven, but Dykeman Road, Dykeman Street, right? Yeah, it, it that's comes the, to, you go across the bridge it, and then you come yeah, to the T. And you can go into a parking lot right yeah. there. And then if you take a right, there's a, after you go past the little apartment complex there, there's another park right there. So there's two Packard Park. Beat Packard. There's two parks that are real close. Now, I think that might not be, it might be wise to have someone cover it, one person covering both of those parks. But that's the only ones I can see because the one that's even further up north, I mean, it's a postage stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, Deer Lick is a postage stamp. They're both teeny tiny. Well, they weren't meant for, they're, they're a public access, not meant for a beach. They're, they're, not meant, a, they're meant for utility access. It's not, yeah. not you know, and it just kind but of. But now they're public beaches and they've got, uh, you know, access through people's homes to get to them through. You know, so it, it's kind of strange. But yeah, so really. Our main focus certainly has to be the North and the South Beach. But if, I mean, going, going back to the budget, they, they've got $70,000 earmarked for a truck. Right. I'm aware of one truck in the, the Great Lakes region. It's in Michigan City. Um, and it is a, a recycled fire vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's we, there's seventy thousand dollars. That that's something we should be able to get a hold of, though, considering we have Spencer Manufacturing here in town, which makes them. To be to be perfectly honest, I don't see a need for a, a lifeguard truck. Mm -hmm. What what would be now? Say if there was a need, what would the need be for? I, I think I think two Gators would. It, yeah. It, what, why are they thinking we need a truck? Is it just to add money to the budget, or do they I really? Think so. Bingo, okay. bingo. I'm right. Um, you know, they claim they need um, two lifeguard towers at twenty at, at ten thousand dollars a piece, mm -hmm. um, and then six additional chairs in, in, on top of that. Um, and 
Michigan City is the only beach in the Great Lakes region that I'm aware of that has a, a lifeguard tower. Tower. Most of the beaches have lifeguards chairs. And just um, chairs that sit right on the sand? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of what we used to have. That's right? what we, yeah, exactly. that's all we had. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you know, they, they, well, put they were it, elevated. They were, those guys sat up eight feet off the ground. They were, you had to climb up on them because I don't know if you ever heard the story about when we went in the middle of the night and went there. Over, and, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and messed with them. We, they were our friends. They were, our, bees are a mess. Yes. Yeah, so they were, they don't want to put honey on. <laughs> so, you know, and, so, and see, at least Bob, thanks for listening. <laughs> many, 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 uh, Jurisdictions, right, have a wood shop in their high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do, and they make a program where they build and maintain easy enough. Yeah, yeah, and you know, do it at at at, at, at just for the materials cost. Um, I mean, it, it the, the 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 whole budget, and, and I gave you an outline of you know yes. just like six or seven I items. Right. Um, they've really doubled. The, the, the cost. Right. Especially with the waterfront equipment, the first aid kits, the AEDs, right. the oxygen tanks and all of that. Um, probably could go the same with the spine boards because they say they need a, I could imagine, you know, needing one, maybe one, two per one, ATV. One on, one on each. One, one on each should beach. be fine. Yep. Yep. I mean, yeah. and, and we, I mean, we could go through like line item by line item. They don't need 11 pairs of binoculars. Right. They don't need um, uh, 18 swimming masks, 18 fins, and 18 snorkels. Now, every lifeguard should have fins. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys had a discussion about that. We did. You are way faster. You're way faster in the water, yes. but you're not as fast getting into the water. So you carry them down to the water. Yep. Uh -huh. You put them on in knee-deep water, and then you, you, you swim go. out there. Okay. Now, uh, you, I, I, will you also, I will have to, before you go, I have to preface the one thing about that is when you're in, not necessarily the lifeguard, in a panic situation, but they're trying to do things fast. They're trying to get out there as quick as they can. And we all know what happens when you're trying to make something happen real fast under a timeline. A lot of times it doesn't go faster because you, for whatever sure. reason, you can't get it on or you're struggling. So the lifeguard should have um, their rescue can or rescue tube. Mm -hmm. They should have fins. They should have a rescue board. Um, I, ideally, I mean, maybe a jet ski down the line, they put it in the budget, but I, I don't think that, um, that, that includes special training that I don't think they're aware that, and, that they need. And because you said that, I want to bring you back just a, a touch on this and say, why do we start with a budget that is so huge and, and, and a, a number that's like, oh my God, we can't get this. This is number is too huge for us to raise or to pay whatever it is. Why aren't they trying to start this uh, lifeguard? program in increments let's just get them in there get some lifeguards in there get them trained right well, and then come with the next thing and then next year we add to this and the next year we add to it not just do it all in one shot if if we if we claim that that the lifeguard budget is seven hundred thousand dollars and then at the budget meeting claim that oh that's a low estimate we, that's we, what she said we, yeah the, we, we, we need said. we need to put a lot more yep. here what i think the the the, the voters and the residents here is this is going to cost a million this is going to go to our taxes yeah yeah and that's that's it's just, and, and that's exactly why I think Annie Brown wants to push it to a vote. It's a it's, well, that's a lack it, of leadership. It's a it's a scare tactic. It's an absolute scare tactic. Yeah, it it really is. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I just I just held up um a, a screenshot from Annie Brown's Facebook page when she was running for mayor yep. that said I support lifeguards one hundred percent. We have mm -hmm. a moral obligation to do everything we can to keep swimmers safe. Yeah. Um, at the March 11th priority meeting, she gave zero points. She yeah. had 17 stickers numbered one through 17 for her top priority down to her 17th priority. And lifeguards didn't make a single yeah. sticker. We got a, we got a party though in and, the park. And, 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 and yet she has not said publicly one word about this 180 degree shift yeah. On what is one of yeah. the top three priorities in the in the city of Tulsa. Say what you say what you need to say to get elected and then do nothing about it. And 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 I say it's a joke, but uh, and I said it to you guys earlier. But what do you call what do you call a politician that doesn't uh, follow through on campaign promises? A liar. Uh, well, yes, a liar, a, 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 a one termer. A one termer. A one -termer. Yeah. Well, so I mean, so and, get and, it done now while and, you can. And unfortunately, it's it's not the only misinformation. It's a polite way of saying lie. Yeah. But it's not the only misinformation. At the at the same March 11th meeting, Wendy Anoki asked Kate Hozier directly, specifically, is it is it possible to get guards on our beach this this summer? And this is in March, so this was right. for, mm -hmm. for 2024, right. For, for right. right now. 
And the response was that she had talked to Kate Hozier, had talked to several experts, and that no, it just it just wasn't possible. Well, um, Dr. Greg Field, who um, did his PhD on uh, beach safety education in the state of Michigan and the beach flags in particular, uh, was one of the people that that she talked to. One of the experts she mentioned by name, and Rob Williams was mm-hmm. one of the experts she mentioned by name. A retired chief from um, Newport Beach, California. And um, both of them told her it was not only possible, but but realistic that they could get beat, uh, lifeguards on the beaches. Greg actually um, called her and she stopped returning his phone calls when she found out that he was pro lifeguard, um, won't return his phone calls or, or emails. And he actually sent a letter saying that she misrepresented what he said. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, um, it's 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 just amazing how much bait and switch is going on. Um, and um, I, I told you that that Andy Brown received a letter from uh, Chris Brewster, former president of the, the USLA, offering the USLA support in creating a lifeguard yeah. program here. And yet um, it, that was over a month ago and we haven't heard anything um, yeah, from these from these politicians. So at. Uh- so, Bob, at the July 8th priority meeting that the city council had, Annie said that it was a good idea to put lifeguards on a ballot. And she also mentioned that they need another legal meeting about liability because some people need to hear it again. So could we quickly, um, or however long it takes, talk about the liability issue so Annie understands? So you well, speak, so, sp- speak slow. Uh, so, here, so here's the thing, and I'll use tiny words. But but the fact of the matter is, um, and we get we get bad mouthed by a lot of um, people here in, in South Haven. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it happened r- r- earlier this week. Uh, We're very protective of our own here. We have to be. Uh, you got to understand that the small town mentality just a little bit when it comes to that. Hazlitt is not a big town, so you you probably understand a little bit, a, 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 a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of it. But um, the the amount of the, the lack of transparency is is just mind boggling to me. Mm-hmm. And um, you know the 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 idea that. Um, that people don't have a, a, a right to know, for example, what training the the, the beach enforcement attendants. And I, we've even questioned whether they're CPR trained. Really, and and I and, and I haven't got a definitive answer. Um, and I I have been told, kind of off the record, that that they're not even CPR trained. Wow. Which which would be, and they may be. I, I don't know, but but this but it's this hard right. to find this, those answers. This, though. The city is not forthcoming with with any of that information so it's 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 very it's very frustrating so um you asked about the liability issue Mm -hmm. yes two years ago i sent a copy of beals versus state of michigan the supreme court case that that ruled that a lifeguard would have to be the proximate cause um, of a drowning to be liable that means the lifeguard would have to cause the drowning failing to respond to the to the drowning um, would not be enough to be liable the lifeguard could be sleeping underneath the stand and not cause the, the drowning out in the water. And so the city would not have any liability about that. I sent them a copy of, of, of that case um, brief. Mm-hmm. And um, I sent it to them, uh, to the new city council this year when it came on. So th- this, is, this is not new information for them. They've, they've had this information for years. They just choose to ignore it. Well, and and why, why do you think they're putting their head in the sand? To be honest, I really don't know. I, I, I can tell you that running a lifeguard operation, because I know lots of people who, who do that, it is is a difficult task. Sure. And um, our school used to do it. Our correct program, the community mm-hmm. recreation program mm-hmm. used to do it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's hard to recruit. It's hard to train. Um, it's hard to supervise. But in the end, it's it's the gold standard. Yeah. And so, you know, why would you not do that? If, if it's not a matter of, well, we, we just, you know, we don't want to for whatever reason, whether they just don't want the extra work or they don't want, um, you know, I, I, to be honest, I don't know. And, and I wish they were more forthcoming, yeah. but but they, they won't. Like I said, Annie, Annie Brown pledged 100 percent support. I, I sat at a Zoom meeting where she was directly talking to 
Lisa McDonald, the mother of Emily McDonald, yeah. who fatally drowned with her boyfriend, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and she said she will do everything in her power to bring lifeguards back. And yet she completely turned her, her back on that with, with n- no explanation whatsoever. And it's just, it, it, it's baffling to me how a community, whether you're for lifeguards or, or against lifeguards, if you have someone that, that is running on 100%, we're going to get them, we're going to do this, mm-hmm. and then doesn't do one thing in that arena. Yeah. Yeah. That that's just yeah. It didn't even get brought up for halfway through oh my the God. first year. It they they tried several several council people tried, and they were shot, shot down shot down both by the manager and the and the mayor. Yes, and as well, I've been watching the city council and going to the city council meetings. That's the the vibe they give is that they want to move on to other topics and not discuss anything about beach safety or lifeguards in general. It's very confusing and very uh, yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Despite whether you 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 like all the tourists that come to town and all that, that go to the beaches, we can't roll out a red carpet to people and invite them in like we do. I mean, that's all we are. That's all our town has turned into is a tourist town. We invite these people and come. We want you here, but we're not willing to spend the money to at least to make sure that you're safest at our biggest attraction. And one of the, well, we kind of stopped at this kind of a topic when we left, left the show, the radio show. But what's good for South Haven, and this was at the last little city council thing, what's good for South Haven is good for all of our neighboring communities. It's good for Bangor. It's good for Grand Junction. Right. It's good for everybody. And like Bob said earlier, a lot of the drownings seem to be Michiganders that are happening in our Great Lakes. So what's good for South Haven is good for all of Michigan and even all the the tourists and that our come. visitors. Yes, because I know me personally in 2022, it was hard for me to go down to the beach because that's where I go. I drive through the beach every day, all these things. But knowing that kids and anybody was drowning yeah. there, it. It took me a while yeah. before I could start cruising yeah. the beach again. That, Whether you're against the tourism so or it, not, it does affect we can't have us as citizens here. because then we're constantly reminded every time I go to the beach, I can't say I don't like I know that people died there. Like it's always in my head, somebody died here. Right. And it's right. really weird. So again, the, the the focus is on lifeguards, but but I, I really want to broaden this out again. And we mentioned it during the radio show, um, that Drowning is a complex issue and it needs a complex solution. And lifeguards are only one piece of the of the puzzle with this. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, the flags are another one. And I think we should all agree that in order for the flags to be of maximum benefit, they should reflect the actual conditions at the water at the time that, that somebody's viewing them. Yeah. Yes. Um and so um I'm very critical of the flag system because as we've seen in the in the last week, mm-hmm. it's often that the flags are not accurately representing yeah. the, the, the true danger there. And, we, and, well, and even that you, you brought up a, a, uh, a point when we weren't, when, when we weren't uh, doing this around the air recording, you brought up a point about uh, how relative that flag really is. A green flag to me is that's a perfect day. A red flag. I'm probably going to be okay with swimming, but some people who have never learned to swim or is very lacking in their skills, a, Three inches of water could be deadly to them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and a lot of people think um, that that they're they're a good swimmer because they can swim in grandma's condo pool, or their children are good right. swimmers because they've taken lessons at the Y. Mm-hmm. Well, the Y is always flat and warm yes. yeah. and clear. Not a current. There's mm-hmm. not a current. There's not a wave. And you take that that good swimmer in a pool, and you put suddenly put him out in Lake Michigan, where the water's cold and rough. And the, it's a completely different skill set that you need. Yeah. The answer is not put razor wire across the beach and close the beach. The, the answer is teach people how to, how to accurately use and, and de- determine what their true capability is, what the, what the con- actual conditions at the beach are, and then give them an opportunity to learn how to, how to deal with the, th- the yeah. three foot ways, the, the, the four yeah. foot ways. I, I had, and, and it was kind of always kind of a joke when we said it. Or when I said it, but I always kind of thought that, you know, it's almost one of those things where you have to go through one location to get on the beach. And during that, it's a turnstile type of thing where you got a video here and you got a video here about water safety. And they have to sit there like they're at an amusement park waiting to get on the roller coaster and watch these sure. before they're let in. Sure. Now, it seems ridiculous, but it's exactly what we need to do. It's about education. 
And and actually, um, there's a bill in the Michigan Senate right now, Senate Bill 736, sponsored by Roger Victory from the, the Holland um, area, and um, co-sponsored by my Senator Sam Singh. Mm -hmm. And um, it will mandate water safety education in our public schools, and it, it will be a game changer. It will be as important, maybe even more important than lifeguards on our, yeah. on our beaches, because right. it will apply to not only um, uh, Lake Michigan beaches, but also inland beaches and inland rivers and even backyard pools and, and things like yeah. that. So big, big supporters of that. Um, I, love, love to see that happen. I have to ask, because we're, we're in a world right now that's so divisive with D's and R's. Do you see a difference between D's and R's with who wants water safety, or is that kind of a nonpartisan issue? So Roger Victory is a, a Republican. Mm -hmm. Sam Singh is a Democrat. Mm -hmm. They came together and said this is an absolute no-brainer, and mm -hmm. they've gotten strong, strong bipartisan support in, in a, during an election Amazing. year. Yeah. What about our to, local to, Democrats to, to, to that can't done. seem to grasp that Let, concept? Let's. let's um, I, I think I, I can't imagine anybody being against this. You know, again, I, I come from the fire. Service, you wouldn't think so. Um, all of you know how to what to do if your clothing catches on fire because yeah. you're all younger than roll. me, right? Yeah. Roll. Right. Every child in America learns that. Why? Because most children have been to a fire station or had a firefighter yep. come to their school the first week in October. Yeah, every week or every year. Every, every year for fire prevention week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why don't we do the same thing? We do fire drills in schools. We do lockdown drills in schools. We do tornado drills in schools. In Indiana and Illinois, they do earthquake drills in schools. Mm -hmm. Drowning will kill more kids than fire, lightning, yes. tornadoes, school shooters, and earthquakes yes. combined. And there is very little water safety education. Now, um, South Haven has a, a water safety mm -hmm. education program that's fantastic. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the locals tend not to, to get into trouble in yeah. the water here. Um, but the fact is that that somebody coming from Hazlitt yeah. probably gets very little yeah. water safety education. So now, education is a huge, huge piece what, of, what of the puzzle. What about making that, a, I mean, actually part of the curriculum in a high school? Oh, it would, this would be K K twelve. Absolutely, yeah, I think mean, you gotta yep. be teaching yep. kids how to swim in high school, no yep. matter no matter what. Um, and, you know, I I can't. When I was in college, uh, I played baseball. Well, our coach would bring us to the pool, so we're gonna we're gonna swim. You guys are gonna be in the pool for a half hour and swim, swim, swim. Well, I was a swimmer. I would swim my laps. All the rest of the guys, their laps, they're going around the outside, half of them, because they don't know how to swim. I'm like, yep. these are grown men that don't know how to swim. Right. And to me, that is just it. it it's, it's, it's you should be happens. able to, you should be able if you can walk and run, you should be able to swim. Yeah. The, the National Drowning that. Prevention uh, uh, Alliance has a new program called um, First Sport. And the idea here is that swimming should be the first sport that you mm -hmm. teach your children, because if you teach them how to throw a baseball, that's great. Right. Right. But it's not going to save not their life. Save their life. Yeah. Yeah. You well, can teach them, you can teach them soccer unless you got to throw right. a ball at someone and really <laughs> coming after you or something. <laughs> right. Right. But 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 make that everybody everybody should learn how to swim and, and have the opportunity to swim. And and you know I'm, I'm, we mentioned the flags, but but the signage is is also important. So um, thankfully. This year, uh, after uh, after three years of, of harping on the the city for the Marty Jordan Beach Safety Plan, which is um, a court ordered plan that uh, requires them to have, for example, the signage on the beaches and stuff, they changed the the flag definition. Green used to equal go, mm -hmm. which is scary as can be, mm -hmm. because we have we had we've had at least two fatal drownings so far this year on green flag days. Um, we typically have. Um, a, a number of drownings on, on green flag days. Believe it or not, we have more drownings on green and yellow flag days than we do on red flag days. This is already, they have no, they, it's green. It's, that means it's, everything's beautiful. Yes, I have nothing yes, to worry yes. about. And so they don't flag for offshore winds. They don't flag for cold water. Um, and we think that's a, a mistake, not only here in South Haven, but we've, we've expressed that to the state of Michigan, the Michigan DNR. Um, if you go down right now to the pier, there's a sign on the pier. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, has a picture of a throw rope, which is a, a, a rope that you put in a bag, and then you can throw the rope out to out to somebody. Um, and this claims um, it can be used as a lifeline to rescue an unconscious victim. Who? Well, how did they grab the rope? I don't understand. Un Does it got a hook? No. Does oh. it inflate? <laughs> no. Oh. It's just a rope that you throw e out to e someone e who's even unconscious. Even if it inflated, could an unconscious person grab it? Grab no. hold of it? No, no, that just seems. Why would they write this? It's got to have a hook on it. E or something. Every every single beach safety flag sign on the beach on the city's website 
uh, warns about a dangerous undertow. And I'm told that everybody in, in, in South Haven knows what an undertow is. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot. What's an undertow? Uh, last time I said something about it, I got corrupted. Well, I thought, <laughs> it's a current. I, it's really a rip current, was is it not? A longshore or a rip current. Like, I I don't know. Undertow is not the word because undertow makes you feel like it's going to, it's underneath the water right. when it's, it's really not. It's pulling you out. It's a, the rip current. Have, have either of you been to like Cabo San Lucas or the. No, the, the... no I've been to Myrtle Beach, but okay. that, I was very young. M- Myrtle, the waves Myrtle are is insane. Myrtle is a pretty, is a pretty flat beach. So mm-hmm. you need to imagine a very steep beach. Okay. Okay, where where it's it's you're almost climbing up a dune. Okay, come and a big wave comes in and and the w- water washes up that embankment mm-hmm. and then comes fly comes rushing back with such force that it knocks people off their feet. Okay, that's what an undertow is. An undertow happens right at the, where the where the the shoreline and the water meet, and it'll pull you underwater. It, it would it will pull you back. Pull you back. It, it can knock okay. you off your feet. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're in you it, it's in it's in shallow water because it's mm-hmm. the what the wave has washed up up the beach most people think that undertow is is when they use it they're really referring to a rip current and mm-hmm. a rip current happens at a sandbar where the waves come over the sandbar and then the, the, it funnels back through a cut in that sandbar um, it's very difficult to see on, on the Great Lakes because the waves are so much closer together. There's a, a kind of a viral picture going around the, the internet now on social media um, that shows, I, I think it might be Myrtle Beach, um, a, a rip current there where it's pretty obvious because the waves are all breaking in the same place mm-hmm. because the, the, they're coming from waves that are generated thousands of miles away. Here in the Great Lakes, the waves are so close together and they break chaotically because they're they're breaking when the the top of the wave is blown over the yeah. over the bottom of the wave. So it's all almost impossible to, to spot yeah. a rip current. I've never had heard that about these waves being so close. But now that I think about it, when you're out there on days when this wave, it's like you hit the wave. And if you're body surfing, as soon as you get to your feet, you're almost getting smacked with another exactly. one right away. Exactly. And if you're in a situation where you're gasping for air and these waves are that close, it's it's almost a foregone conclusion that you're a goner. Yeah. So, so as a surfer, when I go to the East Coast or the West Coast, or even if I'm lucky enough to go to back to Hawaii, right? I might have a six foot wave every ten seconds. Mm-hmm. That's dangerous, sure. Right? But yeah. really, a four foot wave every four seconds, I would argue, is more dangerous yeah. than a six foot wave every ten yeah. seconds. We all remember that would be in halfway, you know, up to the waist in the water, and the waves are coming in, and you have to jump. To miss one, so you get your head over it. And I mean, as soon as you land, you have to almost jump again. again. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then it doesn't take very long to get tired when you're, when you're, and if you can't jump anymore. Yeah. If you're in the ocean and there's a 10 second period, which is a very common wave period in the ocean, I have seen an eight second wave on the Great Lakes once in my life. I know they happen. I know that I've I've even heard of nine or 10, but those are like the mysterious waves that you know mm-hmm. that, that happened up in lake superior and well things. those but, are the ones where the aliens caused those when they arose <laughs> from the bottom of the lake it, it's most common Stop here it. to have <laughs> three to five foot waves at three to five seconds uh-huh and 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 a, a a four foot wave at three seconds is it is it it's like being being like jab after jab yeah. after jab yeah. after jab it reminds it's not me a, of the wave big... pool at um Michigan Adventures. Sure. It's, it's like I almost I went under once, but luckily I had somebody with me. They pulled me up and they drug me to the end and I stayed there the rest of the time. I can't handle it. Yep. It's not a big roundhouse or a big knockout punch. It's this this constant, never yeah. ending yeah. barrage. A thousand wave after wave after wave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um I mean we we wish not only South Haven, but the entire lakeshore would embrace water safety and put up accurate signage. For example, mm-hmm. um, uh, up until last uh, a year ago, spring, there was a rip current sign at the Holland State Park on Lake Mekatawa. Oh, that doesn't have. There's not the only waves there are generated by boats. Exactly, and there's no sandbar yeah. to, to create a rip current. So, um, and again, we get we get painted as the bad guys. We get painted as the naysayers. We actually took a sign that showed how to throw a throw ring. And gave them the sign that showed how to throw a throw ring, which is much more appropriate at Lake Makatawa. Um, they had a great big wooden sign that said "dangerous undertow." They had wow. um, they had a couple of, of um, uh, inappropriate signs. There's a, a situation called an outlet current. We had two fatal drownings earlier this year up in um, Ludington State Park, where there's a, a small creek. 
mm-hmm. runs out from mm-hmm. Hamlin Lake. Um, and that causes a, a dangerous current even on even on a green flag day. And so mm-hmm. they had a couple of uh, outlet current signs in, in Holland. And thankfully, they've, they've, they've gotten a lot better. They, they have put their throw rings in cases. Um, their signage is, is much better. It's still not perfect, but it's much better. Um, like I said, all of the South Haven signs still worn of an undertow, which is, which is ridiculous. Um, they, this, the sign next to the pier, you know, claiming that you can use a throw bag for an unconscious person, um, just does, doesn't make yeah. any sense. And this is, this is really low hanging fruit. We're not talking thousands of dollars to do this. They made stickers for the signs where they said green equals go. And now it says green equals low hazard, right? Yeah. Now they probably didn't cost them probably under $50, $50 to put those stickers on there and make it much more um, recognizable, make it make it much more accurate in terms yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of, of those things. Yeah. So, Bob, how, how long have you been really into, you know, making people aware about lifeguards and the in the rest of the water safety? You know, I was a, I was a lifeguard in, in college. And um, I mean, so I've always been really, really interested in, in water safety. Um, and, and then um, late in my career at the fire department, I was the fire marshal for, for the city. And um, in, in my tenure as fire marshal, we had, we had 12, I was fire marshal for 12 years. We didn't have a single fire fatality, knock on wood. And um, we had three, pretty good record. Three, three, three fatal roundings in one year. Yeah. Now, what, what I'm going to ask you here is let's leave South Haven out of this for a minute because sure. their grade already probably would be an F if we were to give a grade on. Actually, uh, maybe not. Th- there are areas that are even worse. Oof, oh, that hurts. Yeah, it um, does. Let, let's talk about state in general. For sure. all the time you've been doing this, and let's just say you're an activist for it. You want to see better water safety. You want to see better practices. How do you think, what grade would you give the state overall for wanting to make this happen the state of michigan yes at uh, d d minus okay so better than south haven uh maybe a little bit no 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 so uh, i mean they're, they're both so let me just to put things in perspective yeah you mentioned earlier scott that, that michigan has more coastline than any other state but alaska all right we have um more coastline than any other great Lakes state and yet we have fewer lifeguards than every other Great Lakes state. Oh. Indiana, Ohio. Really? Wisconsin. Indiana has more than us? Absolutely. And yeah. they've they've only got For, what? 40 miles of coastline yeah. and only half of that is yeah. is, wow. is public. Yeah, because the rest well, of it's what, industrial. What, what year did uh, the, the state of Michigan pulled all the out of the state parks? They pulled the lifeguards in what, the mid-90s? Uh, they were in the 90s. I'm not sure exactly yeah. when. I think they did it incrementally. I don't right. think they did it. They did it all at once. But they but they may have. I don't I don't know that. But yeah, so so Indiana has, you know, basically as much coastline that is as, so, as from here to New Buffalo. That is amazing. And you've got me. Michigan City has guards. Yeah. Indiana mm-hmm. Dunes mm-hmm. National Park has guards. Indiana Dunes State Park has guards. And Will Hollow Beach um, over toward Chicago. More guards than we guards. have in Michigan. It's mm-hmm. alarming. That that act that that is. Um why do you think that Michigan and, and towns like South Haven are so are just going to drag their feet? Is it because they don't want to bring on the extra program? They don't want the extra work. They don't want to go find the money. They well, what is their reason for this? I'm I'm a um, as a fire retired firefighter and, and as a paramedic, um, it, it's just really hard for me to deal with bureaucracies that that put money over life safety. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, 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 I wish I had an answer. I don't have an answer. That, that's the an answer. And I, I know you've asked Annie Brown to be on your show. Yeah. Numerous times. Um, no, she wouldn't, there's no way she will come for whatever reason. They're scared. I'm going to ask her a hard, a hard question, I guess. Oh, about the truth. About the truth. <laughs> yeah. And what she's done. I, I, I mean, I, again, I, 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 I can't believe there are not. 100 people lining up for every city council meeting where you only get five minutes to speak, but but person after person coming in and saying, please make a statement about your rejection of, of the lifeguards after claiming to support them 100%. Well, they won't let us, they won't answer questions back to the public. And I, I find that very interesting because I- It's I, not a meeting. It's not a question and answer. You get to come up and say what you want you to say, say to them. You say what you want and yeah. you better say it correctly or you'll be interrupted and excused. Yeah. That's what I've noticed these past few months. 
very juvenile behavior. You got a little dictator sitting well, in that middle seat. What, once well, again. She needs to- yeah, I, th- I think she's she's really happy that she finally got that gavel. She's been wanting it for an awful well, it's, long it, time. It, it's, well. un, it, it's unfortunate. And, you know, there was a, there was a situation a, a while ago where they were discussing lifeguards. And um, one of the council people, Mary Hosley, um, they, they, uh, the mayor asked for a vote. And Ms. Hosley said, I, I don't believe that we've had enough, enough to talk. Take a discussion, yeah. discussion about this. And according to, to Robert's rules... What happens then is discussion continues until somebody um, moves the question. Instead of, right. instead of asking the question is asking for a vote. Right. Moving the question is saying, we've had enough discussion. We need to vote on whether to yeah. vote or continue discussion. Yeah. And then use the vote and I need to suck. And, Somebody and, needs to suck it. And so when, when Mary Hosley said, I don't think there's been enough discussion, what should have happened was there yeah, either discussion should have continued or they should have voted whether to have the the the, the vote. Um, but um, Mayor Brown just continued with with the vote, and Mary Hosley said point of order, which if you know Robert's rules uh-huh. should stop everything. Somebody mm-hmm. somebody raises a point of order mm-hmm. that has precedence over anything, and nothing happens until the point of order is um, taken care of. Yeah. She said, point of order, nothing happened. The vote yeah. continued. And then in social media, there were tons of people calling out Mary saying, oh, you needed to vote because because that's what we pay you for. And, and you you know, that, that's that's what wow. you're here for. And we didn't call you to, to, to you know, uh, stonewall this and, and and make it. You should you should have voted. You should be uh, impeached. Or, well, or Bob, I don't recalled. think a lot of people are watching or listening to these things because Going to the meetings and listening to the meetings, I feel Mary had every yeah. right. She's to, not the one that has to be recalled. The Absolutely. questions and all the things that she has, if anything, she's helped me understand so much more yeah. about the problems inside the city. So I, I know that that um, I hope I'm not breaking a, a confidence here, but I know that she's reached out to some of the experts that 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 we have have put forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's not allowed to copy. Other council members, or the the mayor, or the the city manager, with with correspondence. Yeah. To tell you the truth, every one of those uh, city council members should be calling these people to talk to them and get themselves educated. Because when I hear them say, "Here's an issue that we've had now uh, for three, four, or five years in South Haven," and then you get someone on the council say, "Well, I don't really know much about that." Well, then you're not doing your job. You're supposed to know about that before you get here right. in this seat for that meeting. Right. Yep. Right. And 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 Dr. Field is lives in Holland. He he takes phone calls from he works for the CDC Foundation mm-hmm. with, yeah. with with an emphasis on drowning. He takes phone calls from people all over the country yeah. every single day answering questions. Because he's a private story. individual. Right. And, and people who work in the bureaucracy, they can't seem to take calls and they can't seem to make calls. Everything to me, what I've noticed, they're, they're all, and not to say that everybody on the council is like that, but in, as a whole, a lot of people are, they, nothing has any value until they think of it. And if you bring it to them and say, we should do this, this and that, well, we don't we want nothing to do with that. But once they get past that and they got that seed and then they start thinking of themselves, then they start thinking it's a good idea. Once they think it's their idea, they'll, they may just push forward. I think it's because everybody else wants it that they've got their heels dug in and don't want to move forward with it. Hmm. Whether I'm right or not, I, that's just an opinion. Yeah, I, just an opinion. I think it's just a lot of people aren't being either looking at the information or getting the information. I don't know what people's excuses well, you can't, are, but how, you have to. How easy is it to find on their website? You're right. <laughs> yes. No, because from the July 8th priorities meeting i cannot find a single thing yeah and the last podcast we did we did that podcast to talk about that they actually did put it in their budget and they had a seven hundred thousand dollar budget we talked about why we thought it was kind of a crazy budget and then all of a sudden now at the last meeting we need to put this to a uh to a vote and we can't find now it on the it's it's now not part of their website anymore it's off the but it's off the uh website they're not talking about the budget and I just don't get that. I, I I completely agree. We have we have experts that have volunteered, you know, um, ex lifeguards, ex lifeguard chiefs. Um, mm-hmm. I talked with a good good friend of mine, Scott Ruddle, is the lifeguard chief in Grand Bend, 
Ontario, he would be more than happy. He's come and helped out in in Gary, Indiana, and and other places in the in the states. Um, he was at the USLA meeting in in Pittsburgh. Uh, he'd be more than happy to to, to come yeah. and help and and help the city design a plan. But there doesn't seem to be any. No. Well, I don't want to say any. There are four council members. Say who, not much. Who keep who keep trying to bring yeah. this up, and yes. there are. Um, other council members and the mayor and the city manager who are stonewalling. There, this there are two that will follow the mayor stuff. no matter what she says. And the other four are trying to get something done, but they cannot. Well, they understand why they were put in the position they are. And that's, you know, the four that are fighting for these things that are fighting for homes in this city and that are fighting for lifeguards on our beaches. Yeah. Or you don't even have to say lifeguards, beach safety on our beaches. It's silly. All of this is silly. All these lies and misinformations. It's what's, dumb. What's, what's, really, what's really heartbreaking is that there will be another drowning in South Haven. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When, yep. And then there'll be more hand wringing and there'll be, you know, and, and unfortunately, those people who are working the most diligently to bring them back mm -hmm. will be the ones who feel yeah. much worse about it than those who are stonewalling it. Yeah. They will come up with excuses. Well, well, I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that or that was too hard or this or that. Um, and it, it's, it's just inevitable. Yeah. And, and it, it's really, so, the, work, the work that we do at, at the Surf Rescue Project is heartbreaking because we work with a lot of family and loved ones um, mm -hmm. who are trying to make sense of this. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Lisa McDonald has on many occasions reached out and, and thanked the, the, most of the residents from South Haven, but you still have, you know, the mayor who completely turned her back and, and as far as I know, hasn't had any conversation with her about it. You have um, one of the planning commission yeah. members. Which who, when she was running, she did on a, a post with Facebook, she tagged Lisa. Oh, absolutely. And wanted to make absolutely. sure everybody saw that she was, absolutely. that she was on board with this and she's going to take care of this. And, yep. and it's just, and then just nothing. Now let, let, let's. And uh, Mary Holsley. It's just kind of funny that Annie Brown is, so anti Mary now. Well, it's because she. Uh, well, it's because she disagrees with her. And my guess is that anybody that disagrees with Annie Brown will not be on her uh, priority list. That's just the way that is. Hmm. She's lied to me straight to my face, and I don't go for that. And no, I, don't and lie to me. Don't tell me something, then do something the opposite. To do her and she she sent her little lap dog out to do his whatever he needs to do because she didn't like something I said. I I don't go for this, and she is very much a no. Uh, don't talk about something that I disagree with, and I, I don't know. I, before I go too far and say something I don't want to say, let's talk about the feeder program into uh, lifeguarding. You know, like I said, back in the day when we were at Scott Nine High School, um, they the all of the lifeguards were swimmers. They're all on the swim team. They've all been through lifeguards. Yeah. Now, with all that being said, there's a lot of people that are saying, well, we just don't want our kids as lifeguards. Maybe that they're not the right people for it. But why aren't we at least starting that feeder program in the schools to all these employees that don't work in the summer? Rob, that is a, that is a fantastic question. It's an absolutely fantastic question. And I, and I, I, I chuckled a little bit because... I've heard so many times, not only here in South Haven, but the the rest of the of the, of the state, we can't have 15 year olds up on the lifeguard stand putting their lives at risk. Well, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody is advocating for 15 year olds to be lifeguards yeah. on on surf beaches. You, can, you, you legally you can't for for one, okay. But 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 secondly, um, a a a robust water safety plan like many of the beaches around the country has. Um, is, is an absolute no-brainer. It's a win-win-win situation. So, for example, Evanston, Illinois, had a junior guard program. Like, th think of camp. Think of soccer camp or baseball camp. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you went to, to, mm -hmm. to, to baseball class, as yep. an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old, right? And yep. some college hotshot ball player comes and signs autographs right. and, yep. you know, teaches you mm -hmm. how to swing the bat correctly and, and things like that. You pay good money for that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Your, your family plays yeah, hundreds those aren't of cheap. Yeah. For, for a week of that. Uh huh. So you create a junior lifeguard program and you charge a couple hundred dollars a week. 
and the kids come and they get dropped off at nine o'clock in the morning. They get picked up at four o'clock in the afternoon. We work the, the, the bejesus out of them, tiring them up, tiring them out. We teach them about water safety. We teach them about swimming. We have some fun. We play mm-hmm. some games yeah. and, you know, do that kind of thing, especially with the younger kids. Um, but then as they get older, they, they, they join the swim team. They join a water polo team, ideally, because right. that, that makes them yeah. super, super right. confident in, in the water. Um, and then, um, and, and then you, so even if they don't go on and become a real lifeguard, they've had water safety training mm-hmm. for three or four summers in a, in a row. So they are much safer at the beach. They're less likely to drown and more likely to make a positive rescue when it happens. On top of that, now you've seen them year after year and you know what's their work ethic like. Right. Yeah. Right. Are they lazy and, and, and don't help out? Are they mean to other kids? Right. We're not going to hire yeah. them as lifeguards. Yeah. We've seen them for we, we've been vetting them for three or four or five years. Sure. Right. And then they go on and become um, lifeguards. And then that becomes a feeder program for your police and fire agency yeah. and, and for the and for the military. Yeah. Back, back in the day, uh, we had we, the South Haven had a great swimming program. Uh, the, they called it Rotary. Then it turned into Swim Dragons. And I don't know what they call it now, but it starts at seven, eight years old and goes right on up. Um, and crack. They used to run uh, programs for uh, swimming, swimming lessons where they start right at, I mean, almost time you come out of the womb up to like 12 years old when the last one is. What I went through all of those growing up and at 12 years old, I had been through every swimming program that they had in South Haven. Now, I wasn't eligible. The next program was junior life saving. But you couldn't take that until you were 16. Yeah. So from 12 to uh, 16 years old, I lost total and swimming at all. I said, I didn't even, I'd go swim in the backyard and swim in the lake or whatever it is, but I'm not taking lessons. I'm not learning how to swim better. I'm not learning how to hold my breath for two minutes underwater. And, you know, and, and life saving, they go down the, you know, if everybody remembers in gym, there was a game when we were doing in the pool where the uh, coach or the, the teacher would throw this big old brick into the water and whoever came up with the brick was the winner. Can you imagine 15, 16 yeah. guys fighting for that brick? Yeah. And, and to, we've we've gotten so soft in who we are. Say we can't put kids up against kids. They can't have competition. We've lost competition. We've lost all these things. We're getting weak. And I think that's one of the big reasons why our programs like life saving and stuff is getting weaker too. I think a junior lifeguard program would be amazing opportunity for a lot of youngsters or teenagers to become part of their community mm-hmm. and to have those skills of life saving. Um, let's say they're even at like a party. A pool party at a friend's house. They can recognize those things. Exactly. Exactly. Like it's a good thing, and I don't yeah. know why everyone's pushing yeah. back so at much. At twelve, make me take it every year till I'm sixteen. Absolutely. At least keep the keep right. the game. I know. Yeah. I'm not sure the whole program at South Haven, but I know that every year my kids have been having a whole week of water safety. They go to the pool every day at the high school, and they learn to swim good. and they learn good. things. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly every single detail, but it's good for the kids. Good, good friend of mine's a, a junior lifeguard instructor in San Clemente, California. They have a waiting list. They have tryouts for the junior lifeguards. They have mm-hmm. tryouts, and, and and they pay about two hundred and fifty dollars a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so it it, fun, it funds the entire not only the junior lifeguard program, but it funds a great deal of the the, the lifeguard program. Right. So um, you know, and and again, it's a it's a win 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 situation. If you go to Australia, they call their junior lifeguards nippers, and it's very much like little league baseball here. Can't say that in the United States. That's N- nippers, no, nah, that would be a bad <laughs> thing. It, it, it's an N word. <laughs> but but so as as a result, you go to a beach in California, and more than half of the of the people there have been through the junior guard program, been through the Nippers program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the beaches are much, much, much safer. We have a bigger drowning problem in the Great Lakes region than they do in the entire country yeah. of, of Australia. Yeah. Uh, to me, wow, I, yeah. I think that should be a prerequisite Crazy. to graduate. You need to be able to swim a 50 free without stopping at least, <laughs> at least a 50 well, free. So, so, and balance so, a checkbook. Yeah. That, that, that brings up a really, really fascinating thing. Because we, we do the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project um, on top of – the collecting the drowning data that we do and working with families and, and friends of, of loved ones. We also do um, education programs, everything from preschool kids, um, like Dave Benjamin is doing public uh, presentations in Conneaut, Ohio, I, I told you during the, the radio show. Um, and we do special projects. We work with um, 
task force all over the country. We go and advocate for new legislation, both in Indiana and Illinois. And, um, you know, so we, we, we do a, a great deal of things. And I just lost my train of thought where, where I was going. Well, guess what? Part. I've done that three times so Dave, far during you this podcast. You and Dave are, uh, <laughs> doing your work together. So, um, so well, one of the things we do is, is education. So we've done more than more than 1,200 public education programs in the, the 10 year, the since 2010. Um, and so I'll go and we, we start out our presentations and we'll ask the kids, whether they're in preschool or high school, raise your hand if you know how to swim. 90% of the kids raise their hand. So think about this. Mm -hmm. 90% of the preschoolers believe that they know how to swim. Wow. And that, that, that was our reaction. Wow, that's, yeah. there's there's something wrong here. All right, let's let's there's, find out. There's something scary. No, no, no. 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 So, so we did. That, that's exactly what we did. We, we didn't throw them in the water, but we said, okay. So what does what does that mean? So we got permission from their parents and from their their teachers, and and we sat some of the kids down. We said, what does it mean when you say you know how to swim? And kids say, well, I know how to swim with my floaties on. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. how to swim with my puddle jumper on, which is super super dangerous, right? Or I know how to swim. I have a backyard pool. Oh, how big is your backyard pool? Oh, this big around. It's four, right. four feet around. Yeah. How deep is it? Well, it's like six inches deep, right? You can buy them for $10, oh, yeah. $10 at Walmart, yeah. right? And throw some water in it. And and then what do you what do you tell the kids when when you fill it with water? You guys want to go, go, go swimming? You want to go swimming? Yeah. And then when they come to Lake Michigan, right? And, you, and we tell them, look, Billy, you got to be you got to be a good swimmer in order to go out in Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. I am a good swimmer. I've been swimming in my little six yeah. inch deep pool for weeks and weeks but, and but weeks. But doesn't this now kind of... Start falling into the education of the parents also? Oh, absolutely. Because if, if I've got a four or five-year-old, I'm not saying just go out there and swim. Even when it's calm and I'm going out there with them. And and we've talked about this before. And I, and I understand the need for lifeguards. I understand the need for water safety. But I also understand the need for personal responsibility. Sure. And we seem to be in a culture that you don't have to have any personal responsibility anymore. It's all on somebody else. Well, I, I think I think we've done a disservice to our communities by by not embracing water safety across the board. And mm -hmm. and again, you know, being, being pigeonholed as the lifeguard people is problematic because lifeguards aren't the, aren't the solution. They're a part of the solution, but they're not. They're not the only part of the solution. It's just kind of a stopgap, right? Right, and and it's again, it's it's the last thing. So so if the signs don't work, if swimming lessons don't work, mm -hmm. if if um you know the flags on the beach don't work, then it's up to the lifeguards to to, to save it. But let's let's bolster all of these things moving forward and make sure that all of these things are are taken care of. And um you know, drowning is the leading cause of accidental death in kids one to four. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the second leading cause of accidental death in kids 15 and under. I mentioned that more kids will drown every year than, you know, fire, lightning, tornadoes, school shooters, and, and earthquakes mm -hmm. combined. Um, so it's a huge, huge problem. Um, if you have a, a, a two-year-old, you can't take them up to Myers without putting them in a car safety seat. If you buy a vehicle that's built, I think, after 2017, it's going to have a backup camera. Yeah. Because... We run over. We've lost too many kids that way. Well, yeah, a, a couple dozen a year uh -huh. across yeah. the United States. We'll lose a couple dozen kids this week to drowning. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's nothing between here and the water that you know that protects them the way that a, that a car safety seat does. So I think we need a, a, a full change of, of orientation. We need a whole change of mindset to let's not close the beaches. Let's not fly red flags. Let's teach kids how to swim in three foot waves. And yes, we can warn them about it, but let's protect them with lifeguards once they get there. Right. I, I think we do a, a tremendous disservice by, especially like the other day, right? There was a, a, a red flag flying. Mm -hmm. The waves were not breaking at all, except yeah. right on the shoreline. Um, the buoy, the South Haven buoy had the waves at 1.6 feet. And yet there's a red flag flying which in South Haven means that the beach is closed and right. you're subject to a thousand dollar fine mm -hmm. because that's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Let's teach kids with a junior lifeguard program, with a learn to swim program, let's teach them how to deal with 1.6 foot waves, right? Yes, let's continue to fly the flags and, and, and warn them appropriately, right? But let's give them the tools so that they can go out and enjoy those, those 
wavy days, right? Right. The same. Those way, are the best days. They, they are no no question. They're the best days, mm-hmm. right? T- today, I'm most gonna, fun days ever were on six I'm, foot wave days out of the lake. <laughs> I'm gonna go surfing after I after I leave here, uh-huh. right? Because I love the lake and I love to recreate in lake. And it breaks my heart that there are people who are like uh, trying to stop people from from going into the water. And let me just uh, another thing that is just absolutely asinine in my opinion is the fact that here in South Haven, a red flag means it's too dangerous to go into water. You're subject to a thousand dollar fine if you go into water. But if I walk down the beach five miles to Van Buren State Park, yeah. <laughs> a single red flag means that it's dangerous, but open, right. per- perfectly legal for me to go into water. Right. And a double red flag means that it's too dangerous to go into water. What's next? A triple red flag? A quadruple red flag? How many red flags do you need? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's just the the, the whole the whole system, from the signs to the flags to the lack of lifeguards, the whole system is broken. And I would love to see. And we've been advocating at a at a state level to try and get a like a a, a task force together with legislators and experts to address this problem. Because Michigan has a drowning problem. Do you think that's where this really needs to start is the Michigan legislature and then saying and and coming up with policies and laws and saying, okay, now you cities that are on the on the uh, border or on our our lake shores, you have to do this if you're going to have a public beach. So when I first started in, in drowning prevention almost 20 years ago, um, one of the the gurus of, of the, the industry told me that the only way things get accomplished is through legislation. And it just, it made my skin bristle. Yeah, that, that hurts because legislation is slow and it's bureaucratic. Exactly. And half yeah. the time only covers half of what you need. And most of the time has somebody with deep pockets that's looking to make money on it. Money yeah, on exactly. It. Um, but the, the more I'm involved in it, um, the more I, I realize that people aren't going to do it by the kindness of their hearts or, yeah. or you yeah. know. Um, and so I, I think that's, that's why I'm a huge supporter of, of this uh, Senate Bill 736. I think it will be an absolute game changer. Um, we were, we helped, we, we certainly weren't the main uh, group, but the Chicago Alliance for Waterfront Safety, Holly Caseda and, and her people um, were able to get a um, law passed in Illinois that required rescue equipment on the beaches in Chicago. Um, we know that that many lives have already been saved because of that. Uh, the year later, they were able to pass an education rider along with, with that bill. So now there's an education program there. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, um, later in, I think in August, um, there will be uh, the, the bill in Indiana will take place. That's very similar. That will re- require rescue equipment on the, the, the shoreline of, of Indiana. Um, we'd love to see the same thing in Michigan, but because there's so much coastline, um, and not all of it can be can be protected with with equipment. Um, it will be a lot more problematic. So I'm happy that we're starting with the with the the legislation for for education. Um, but there's there's so much low hanging fruit that I that I think it's just it's just so frustrating when communities like South Haven won't won't change their yeah their their flag system won't yeah. won't won't take undertow off of their off of their signs even though you know we've been bringing it up to their attention for years yeah well we don't even know who works for who anymore i mean we were talking the other day that shays is not part of south haven's uh then someone says no they are under south haven and and this is our south haven city and then the town south haven township you know it's i don't want to talk about it you don't want well if we don't talk about it we'll never know what's going on and 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 after your podcast that i tried to i tried to look it up and it's very difficult to find. Yeah, Sh- Shays has a has a pretty good synopsis on their website, but the city it's it, it, it's almost impossible to to, to figure out yeah. who's in charge I, of what. I mean, are they really being what? deceptive on purpose? That's that's what I want to know. If it if they're just not bright and they just do certain things a certain way because they aren't smart, okay, I get that. But if they're doing things and building their website to find information and making it specifically hard for members of the community to find it that's just to me that's i mean it should be in big bold letters here's the budget here's where this is now you have to go through this go through this menu go find this at the bottom of the page go check out addendums on this page and you can find it it's like they're hiding it and don't want nobody to see it and 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 it's real ironic anybody that, that many of them talked about transparency while they were campaigning yeah 
Mm-hmm. And and zero wants and and I and I really don't want to uh, go too much after the city council members itself because I think this problem that we have right now um, stems from the middle seat. I think that's probably accurate. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's a yeah. lot of everyone blaming each other. But when you look at the way things should be ran, well, no. We elect the city council. It, it, it all comes down to leadership every time. If you don't, if you're not a strong leader, you're not going to be able to produce. It's well, and, and 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 unfortunately, it it appears that that there's no desire to cooperate from from across the aisle. Yeah, right. You know, you've got you've got people that are the the, the lifeguard issue is very polarizing. The STR issue is very polarizing. Yep. Um, you know, so they 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 just continue to kick the can down the road. And are they just hoping that it'll go away? I think is so. that because it's not going to go away. I mean, the well, what two- are they going to do when everybody votes that they want it? Well, what what happens in the next drowning and that person finally says, well, I'm going to sue the city. And guess what? I'm going to sue the mayor, too. You know, it's possible. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm going to sue the mayor, too, because she ran on this platform and said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it and done. And she didn't do it. And didn't do it. I, I have actually talked to a couple of lawyers um who are, are are considering like a class action suit, not only for South Haven, but a, across the entire lakeshore. Mm-hmm. Because in order to sue a municipality, you have to prove gross leg- negligence or mm-hmm. willful wanton misconduct. It, ha- it is at this point. I think and, they've been they're, given they're, they're, so they're, much They are bordering on negligence it, it, by not getting this and done. And then like just, I take notes every time I'm at these meetings and it's always just back and forth of acting dumb. Oh, well, we don't know enough about liability. And, 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 and it's like you were sent it. Right. And yeah. Heather presented it. Right. Where, where's your like, lawyer that can't make it right. to meetings? The meeting? lawyer I, can never come. And, and I, yeah. I sent you a copy of, of the letter that Dave Benjamin, my executive director, sent to yes. counsel last week. Because all of this was discussed by the Michigan Municipal League during the Beach Safety Committee. And all of that is part of the public record. Mm-hmm. And um, it, if you go back and, 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 and look at what was said during those meetings, um, Kate Hozier claimed after one of the drownings that they did a robust, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but I can go back and, a robust and find the, the discussion the, uh, about lifeguards at the Beach Safety Committee 2020, and the lifeguards didn't survive the, that discussion. Yes, and if you go back to the record of the Beach Safety Committee meetings, which is all pu- part of the public record, and you can get from the South Haven website, mm-hmm. um, you can find it. Well, yeah, if you can. Sean Russell, yeah, and Cam Doherty, on numerous occasions asked to talk about lifeguards, and the chairperson told them they couldn't discuss lifeguards until it came up on the agenda. Mm -hmm. It was the last item on the agenda, and they talked about it at one meeting, and I'm told it was for probably around an hour. So this robust discussion that was supposed to take six weeks or six months to, to take place really didn't happen, right? And and that, but before that, the city commissioned the clerk, Nathan Slower, to look at lifeguards. He contacted Adam Abasian, who was the lifeguard chief in Evanston. Unfortunately, he's since passed away. Um, but he was scheduled to come and speak at a, at a city council meeting and give his opinion uh, about lifeguards and the, and the beach safety program here. And Dave Benjamin was in, invited to that to that meeting. And um, at the last minute, it was canceled. And when Mr. Slower was contacted, he said, I no longer work for the city and I'm under a non-disclosure agreement. And so uh-huh. we d- we don't know what what happened. Yeah, and that was um, January twenty twenty one. At least that's what I think. I, bl- I believe about so. that time yeah. frame because that's yeah. what's on these notes right here. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it's it's hard to keep all of these things, you know, separate. It's 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 yeah. hard to, it's hard to remember all of these things, and and one or two of these things probably wouldn't raise an eyebrow. But when it's over and over and over yeah. for multiple years involving multiple city councils, yeah. then you have to step back and go, what the heck is going on? Where, yeah, where's this Where's this problem? All right. Well, what I'm, I think we're kind of getting close to a, a good close to a spot to end here. I don't know if you have anything else that you want to make sure that we've got. I mean, we could probably do this all day. Unfortunately, we we, we could do this all day. <laughs> but, but, but being you know? a podcast, we want to do it in steps and okay. series okay. And, and not get everything all at once. But what I will want to what I do want to ask you is let's for just a second, forget the past, forget everything mm-hmm. that's already happened. Mm-hmm. And the only way to go is forward. How do we do that? 
I think the I think the the most important thing that you do is you you leave your you leave your ego outside of the room, and you come in and you say we have a problem, not just South Haven, the entire right. state, the entire right. state of yep. Michigan. We have a problem with drowning. We have a problem with water safety. What can we do to remedy that that problem? Mm-hmm. And it it it's pretty obvious, right? There is accepted best practices across the country, across the world, mm-hmm. right? right? Let's look at what other communities are doing to combat this problem. And let's see if, if, if that is a good fit for us. Okay. You know, and I'm, I'm going to stick around for just a second longer, but <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing? I love it, though. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I totally forgot exactly what I was going to ask you. And this, I've had this in my mind for the whole podcast, and I'm finally getting a chance to ask, and I blank on it. Um, you guys have a question, so I can and I will remember. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm very grateful that you're able to come in today. I've I've learned yeah, a lot thanks. from yeah. all your information that you've sent me, and even just talking on this this show and the and on the radio show, I've I have more things I need to research now. And um, is there anything else specific that I should look into? I guess that would be my question to you. Where, where, where's, what where, else should, where should I look the at? digging happen? We'll 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 talk after after the the, the, the the recording <laughs> is is over. There, there's there's just so much. It's just really unfortunate, but there there really is so much to to go through. Yeah, yeah. And uh, shout out to Sean Russell. Sean's a good guy, and hopefully, maybe we can get him out here to talk about this sometime soon. I'd like to get a few of the old. Uh, uh, lifeguards on the show to talk well, like, about like some a, of their experiences. Like a lot of locals, um, and I don't want to pick on Sean. Um, but we can. He's, well, he's from the greatest class ever of South Haven, 1989. <laughs> but but he but he's but he's a great guy. Yeah, and no he, doubt. He takes he a graduated tremendous... earlier. What's that? He graduated early. 89. No, he graduated me. He did. Yes. Oh. Oh, maybe 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 he was 1990. He was 90. Yeah, he, he graduated with, with Dan. Okay, so he is not a member <laughs> of fault. the best class to ever go through South Haven. Second, second best class. Two will go second, but well, Scott might argue he's an 88er. <laughs> no, but, no. but 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 I but I I know that that not only Sean but other people in the, in the community have told me that they have to be very careful what they say and who they say it to. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because of all the all the backlash. Mouth and, Haven. And, That's and, what and we that, call yeah. this place. And that that's super unfortunate. Yeah. Also. yeah. Well, and it's been that it's been that way forever. Uh, my motto here is: if you don't want everybody to know it, that what you did, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because everybody's going to know. Not, yeah. not just don't talk about yeah. it, but, don't, and, but well, yeah. if you manage to get in a situation where nobody else saw what you did, don't talk about it. Yeah, but don't it's, say a word. Yeah. It's uh that that's just that's our culture here, and it, it's a shame because what I see is a lot of times is you know one of the big things is what do kids do around here? What can kids do? And then we keep making things for older adults for retirement situations. Pickleball, pickleball, mm-hmm. yeah. I yeah. mean, okay, now we, let's get the kids interest at least social, interested. Social we're not, we are no longer a family community. We are an an enemy and then. An enemy, whatever the word Amentities. is. Amentities. Amentities and enemy? retirement community. Yes. That's what we are. We all have to just accept that. Yeah. And is there ever a place where you can go back on it? Could we ever actually make this town? It's always going to be a tourist town. you got the lake. You can't get away from that. It's always people going to come here just to go be a part of the lake, to look at it, to watch the sunsets, go on the beach and do all that. But can is there any turning back the clock to make this more of a neighborhood friendly city and then that's the part of the problem that's part of the problem with voting is we don't have the people that get to vote in town who have property in here aren't residents full-time residents so we're losing a lot with that so rob after the terrible year in 2022 mm-hmm. when we had four fatal drownings yeah. here south haven was labeled by the media rightfully or wrongly the most dangerous beach in the great lakes that could have been a wake up call and the community could have rallied together and said, this has to change. Yeah. We need to become the safest beach in the entire Great Lakes region. How, how do you get the community to be a part of that? Because you know, you're, you said that you ought to do your uh, city council meetings and there'll be one person to talk about it when there, when there should be a hundred. Sure. Why, why is so little, so, why do so many people care so little to actually go say something about it? So in, in Port Washington, Wisconsin, Labor Day 2012, um, a local freshman 
football star, Tyler Busick, drowned in Lake Michigan. And the community absolutely rallied around his death and made tremendous changes. Tremendous changes. Water safety equipment on the beach. They didn't get lifeguards, but they, they did everything short of, of getting lifeguards. Robust water safety education program in the schools. Um, the, the Boy Scouts uh, created rescue stations along the along the beaches the rotary donated a, a bunch of money and um, they, they really were able to bring the community together um, and and make it much 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 safer and I don't know why there's resistance to do that here in South Haven maybe it's because the people weren't weren't local people well it hasn't happened to them yeah. yet it ha- but I mean it's <laughs> but you talk to everybody in town and Let's just take the money aspect out of it and that the let's just say the program was free. How could there be anybody in the city that could be against it? How could there be anybody against it anywhere? The only thing that could actually push you against it would be I have to pay more money for this to happen. And and let's let's just let's be fair. The economy we live in with groceries and everything else isn't so good right now. We're paying double for everything that we did four years ago. So People are more conscious about that now and may not want to have them because they can't afford. Well, people that live in South Haven probably can't afford to pay more in taxes because. Again, I, I don't I don't think, you know, I, I don't think it's especially the fact that the city is exaggerating the cost of this program so much tells me that that if they if they put in a a reasonable program. Mm hmm. That it would be it would be too uh, attractive, yeah, for the, yeah, for the community. Yeah, and, and it they feels would, we don't want and, it, and, and that's it, why we're putting this big price tag exactly, on it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I just, know for just, me that was my thing. Just in the in the four or five, and ho- hopefully you can you can like post that maybe on your on your social media pages mm-hmm. or something. But I mean, just just those four or five items that that, that we mentioned doubled the price of 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 those areas. Yeah. In in the budget. Six sixty yeah. percent in, increased it yeah. by over sixty percent. Yeah, it's just it did. It's yeah. it's absurd. It's absurd. And and the only possible explanation for why they believe they need eleven AEDs. My fire department doesn't have eleven AEDs. Yeah, right. We have we have two stations and and two ambulances and six fire trucks and you know every one of them has an AED, but we don't have we, we, they're not sitting on every mm-hmm. street corner. It, it almost makes me want to use the immortal words of Maxine Waters. When you see these people, you go get in their face. If they're eating their dinner, you go talk to them. You tell them you want life. It almost makes me want to uh, to bring her out for and and say that. But it, it's really kind of true, and we well, have to, of course, do it in a nice and a good way. But if you see so, the mayor, tell her, "Hey, you said you were bringing lifeguards on. Why aren't we doing this?" If again, I have I have been to way more city council meetings than than. I, I would have preferred to. Mm-hmm. I went to one in my life, and that was one more than I wanted to go to. I, I firmly believe that um, many of the residents here are afraid of the repercussions if they if they speak out on on any issue, not just not just the yeah. lifeguard issue, but yeah. on on um, the SGRs and on yeah. you know social district. Yeah. And, it's and very kind of volatile. Well, the, it is. the mayor took off my leash, so I'm talking about it. <laughs> yeah, and I don't care. I love being yeah. canceled. Yeah. Well, so again, I, I have no, I have no bone to pick with with anybody. I'm, I'm a, a firm believer that the the truth will set you free. Yeah. You it know, does. and and if you're hiding something, it's going to come to light. It should come to light. Yeah. And and so that's what it always does. Even 40, 50 years down the line, yeah. it comes to light. But uh, whatever we've got going on, it needs to come to light sooner, so our community members can be more educated to know what's happening behind the scenes. And to me, this still feels like a no brainer. It it seems as though that probably with one year and, and a little time on a capital campaign, you can get two hundred, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars to get a program started right away. Well, so, so and again, we're we're kind of jumping around here a little bit as, as we as we that's you know, what we get, do get get to the <laughs> end. But um, you know, one of the things that that we mentioned in the in the report that Heather put together. Um, was advertising on the lifeguard stands. Right. Both Michigan, or both uh, St. Joe and, and New Buffalo have advertising. On, mm-hmm. And Ms. Hosier claimed that the residents didn't want that. Not here in Little Beverly Hills. 
and and yeah. and, and Martha's it, Vineyard. It, it it strikes me that um, you know, if they want to put the lifeguards up for a vote, they could also put up for a vote whether they you know put advertising on the if it's going to save the residents money. Right. I went. I went to. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the of the brew pub that I went to. Um, but they had a big mural. And it had a picture from 1920 something. That's Harbor Light. Of the pier. In town? Yeah. The Harbor Light. Yeah. And what's on mm-hmm. the pier? A great big advertisement. A great big advertisement. <laughs> I don't remember what it was for. I think it was ice cream or a, a you know, a uh-huh. restaurant or something. It's probably Sherman right. Dairy back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, so it, this this is not a this is not a new concept. Yeah. Right. And and if 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 cost is 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 what you're you're is holding you back. Put advertising on the lifeguard stands. Yeah. If they don't want that, then find another way to to fund it. But don't just say that you know. And that's so silly about oh, people don't want. No, we don't want short term rental signs in residential neighborhoods for commercial properties. Yeah, that's what we don't want. We want lifeguards. We want to feel safe. Again, there's there's a hundred ways you could you could fund this whole program with a a, a one dollar bed tax yep. on the, on the STR. Sure. I mean, you're looking at, right. or even on the you're hotels, looking, you're looking at almost a uh, well on, on, on all of them. On, yeah. on, on, there's on lots all the, of all the rental there's problems. lots yeah. of stuff that oh, can absolutely. happen with short-term absolutely. rentals to fund this. Yeah, and of course, uh, we need to find out where the money for beach parking is going before we double the prices. Good, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> we we because those prices twenty dollars is for go down on the beach and twenty dollars if you pay it on the beach and it gets you to park anywhere in South Haven throughout the day. That's that's awesome. The people are going to pay the twenty bucks. It's it's a flash in the, well, in you, the can, pan. you can fill out a FOIA request, but they'll just deny it. And yeah. Well, see, that's bad, why I'm bad afraid mouth you of. because there are some FOIA requests going through town right now. Before we go really down that slippery slope, I think this is a good place to uh, say say goodbye we did an hour and 25 minutes i tried to get done about about 20 minutes ago and here we went went by in a blink of an eye and and we could keep doing the same but i'd like to again i would like to invite you back to the studio sometime and whether it's three weeks four weeks till something happens whether we now find it back on the budget or they they make their okay it's going to be put up for a vote whenever we get something that happens significantly whether it's good or bad like to have you back and sure talk absolutely some more. so and i think it was a certainly wonderful discussion people yeah. can look at our, our website glsrp.org yes um we have a presence on on facebook um we answer any questions people have even if they're uh, insulting questions mm-hmm. uh, we've received uh, an awful lot of uh, not fond of the threats but we'll we'll respond to those also well, usually but threats and that, it just has no place now if someone has a question and wants to ask you hey i don't like what you're saying why are you doing that that's that's a different but for people to make threats and most of and everybody on facebook it's almost and there's always the one you have to kind of worry about but right. most of them are just scared little wimps behind their keyboard exactly. who won't well, exactly. ever in a day say anything to anybody's face I, I will say though bob you commenting on one of my posts i commented on somebody's thing and you commented underneath it and that's kind of what sparked all of this here because i was just like i don't even understand what's going on <laughs> So I'm grateful for your she's, presence online. She's like, is he being mean or is he I mean, like, I said, well, I, I think he has a straightforward approach. I think is more what I saw. And now. And, and people, people are often, you know, admonishing me and, and my organization, you know, we need to be, we need to be kinder and gentler and nudge people in the, in the right direction. Well, when you, when you've been tracking fatal drownings for more than 13 or 14 years mm-hmm. and every day, you get more reports of more fatal drownings yeah. happening, and you and you work with families and loved ones. Um, your patient runs yeah. pretty pretty thin. Yeah, yeah. and your, especially your intolerance people runs. Well, people thin, just need yeah. to pay attention to the flags and the riptides. No. The more I've learned, the more I understand why the people who are so passionate about this topic are. So, well, they do need to pay more attention to that stuff for one, but there's a, there's, oh, absolutely. But there's a lot of variables that go into what people don't understand when they look at that flag, all the variables, like we discussed earlier, somebody's level of swimming. A green flag day is a very dangerous day for someone who don't know how to swim. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. The way I look at it, the, the, your idea earlier, corral them in, put, (laughs) put the videos up. If they want to act like clowns, we're going to give them a show. You know what I mean? Tell you what, you fly to Australia, 
you will watch a water safety video while you're on the while you're on the flight to Australia. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. And they've got a lot of coastline oh. over there. <laughs> I, I yes, hear they do. That might be <laughs> yes, a good idea yes. for flying into Michigan. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for you're welcome. For having me on. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Bob Pratt from GL. SRP Great Lakes <laughs> Surf and <Surfing>. Rescue <laughs> Project. Oh my goodness! So, you know th- those those come from the days of. Well, I'm going to tell you how I destroyed my memory, but uh, it has been a wonderful oh, show no. for sure. So, <laughs> Scott T, Amanda Jones, Amanda Jones, thank you for all the research and uh, you know putting us all together to get us together here. And uh, until next time, this is all the things they don't want you to talk about. Find us on tabutalkback.com and uh, we when leave us a message let us know what you if you like or what you like about what we're doing because we're just really here trying to get the word out and help everybody uh be a little safer in when you when you get in the water because that's certainly an important thing that goes with boats it goes with everything we've got a lot of it around here and it pervades the water pervades everything we do here in south haven everybody comes here to see it and it's all about what we are so Till next time, Rob Bird here, Amanda Jones, Scott T, and our special guest, Bob Pratt. We'll see you next time on all the things they don't want you to talk about. All the things they don't want you to talk about podcast is part of the Rob Bird Moondog Podcast Network. Go to tabutalkback.com for more information. Copyright 2024.